Good afternoon, dear participants. A hearty welcome to all of you for today's interactive webinar on the Indian factory of the future using collaborative robots to achieve excellence in electronics manufacturing and research and development. I welcome Mr. Pradeep David, country aid from Universal Robots, and our own Mr. Rajesh Nath, Managing Director, VDMA India. This webinar is organized by VDMA, partnering with our member Universal Robots, uh, Kobos, uh, a pioneer in automation solution provider using Kobos. Dear friends, we all hope your families and, work, uh, and working teams are all keeping safe and doing well. I am S. Manohar, and based out of Bangalore, Office of VDMA I would be taking you through the initial part of this today's webinar. So the program is we will have uh, the welcome address by our Mr. Rajesh Nath, Managing Director, and then we would have the presentation by uh, Mr. Pradeep David. He will be explaining the benefits of Cobos in the electronic production, electronics manufacturing and research uh, activities. And followed up with the Q&A uh, compilation uh, and uh, moderated by Mr. Our Mr. Rajeshnath and the conclusion. Before before we continue, we would like to remind all of you that you can post all your questions under the question and answer section. They would be answered in the last leg of the webinar by uh, the by Mr. Pradeep, uh, in moderated by our Mr. Rajeshnath. We are presently recording the webinar and just wanted to keep you all informed on the same for security purposes. A brief introduction of VDMA. Dear friends, VDMA is the largest industrial association in Europe with more than 3,300 members and a, a total cumulative turnover of 232 billion euro, employing more than 1 million people. The most interesting portion is 78% of this production is exported out of Germany. We are a 127 year old institution. Our entire engineering industry is categorized into 38 specialized sectors. We have our first subsidiary was open outside Germany in India, followed up in the other BRIC countries, China, Brazil, CIS, Russia, Japan, and in the Euro land in Belgium. Dear friends, let me introduce our Mr. Rajesh Nath, Managing Director. Mr. Rajesh Nath is synonymous with the, the Indo-German industry. He has strongly promoted the Indo-German relations for close to 20 years or more than 20 years now. He has more than 29 years of experience working in various industries, Germany, Germany and India. The most significant achievement of his has been, he was accorded the cross of the order of merit the highest civilian award received by an Indian from the German president for promoting Indo-German trade. Over to you, Mr. Nath. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Manohar. Uh, good afternoon, friends. Welcome to the web seminar on the Indian factory of the future, boosting electronics manufacturing and research development with COBOLs, being organized by the German Engineering Federation, BDMA, along with our esteemed partners, Universal Robots. I extend a warm welcome to Mr. Pradeep David, General Manager, South Asia at Universal Robots. Pradeep, pleasure to have you with us today. And Thank also, you. I would like, yeah, I also welcome Mr. Dhananjay Naidu, Founder and Managing Partner, Anode Business Solutions. Friends, with a per capita disposable income and private consumption having doubled in the past seven years, India has emerged as one of the largest markets for electronic products in the world. The electronics market is valued at around $120 billion in 2018-19. And if we look at the segment-wise distribution, mobile phones, 24%, consumer electronics, 22%, strategic electronics, 12%, computer hardware, 7%, LEDs, 2%, and industrial electronics, 34%. Uh, these comprise also of auto, medical, and other electronic products. There has been, in fact, more than two times growth has been achieved in the domestic electronic production within the last four years. Over eight times growth achieved in domestic production of mobile devices. Domestic electronic component market in India 
for 2019 is valued at $20.8 billion, which excludes imported PCB assemblies. Digital transactions per capita per annum have increased by more than 10 times in five years. India is a global R&D destination with 1,140 R&D centers of MNCs in India, employing around 9 lakh people in this R&D sector. The global electronics market is estimated to be around US dollar 2 trillion. India's share in the global electronic manufacturing has grown from 1.3% in 2012 to around 3% in 1890. In fact, in order to position India as a global hub for electronic system design and manufacturing, ESDM, the government has some interesting schemes like Production Linked Incentive Scheme, PLI, schemes for promotion of manufacturing of electronic components and semiconductors, SPECS scheme, and Modified Electronics Manufacturing Clusters Scheme, EMC 2.0. One of the biggest challenges for the Indian electronics manufacturing sector is the excessive dependence on imports. China is the largest manufacturer of electronics in the world and also the largest exporter. India imports almost US dollar 60 billion worth of electronic equipments, assemblies, components and raw materials every year. And the majority of this is sourced from China. Wuhan is a major manufacturing center for electronics industry and companies based there are important suppliers for the Indian manufacturers. India has only capability to, has limited capability to support electronic manufacturing. About 70% of the electronic components come from China and most of Indian companies are doing the final assembly and testing here. This is also the situation in the automotive industry where typically around 40% of the parts are imported from China or overseas. To stabilize the situation, there is definitely a need to step back and re-strategize. For years, the automotive industry was the largest user of robotics until a few years ago, friends. By 2016, sales of robots in electronic industry has increased by 40% and reached around almost the same level as in the automotive industry. This huge increase in robotization has enabled the electronic industry to produce cost effectively and at a high quality. Work with an electronic industry requires sophisticated treatment because vulnerable materials are often used. Assembling delicate circuit boards and testing PCBs requires the accuracy and controllable power from the robot. The smart collaborative robots have a built-in sensitivity and can work on an accuracy of 0.1 mm, which is perfect for working with fragile components and high quality accessories. The use of cobots makes it possible to automate work processes quickly and with flexibility. As Mr. Pradeep David would also be highlighting, cobots are easy to program and can be taught new tasks in no time. Besides the fact that the industry benefits from increased productivity, employees are Benefit are also benefiting from these cobots. They are spared the need to do monotonous work and can develop in other areas within the company. Now friends, coming back to the present industrial scenario in India in this COVID era, the term VUCA, as we know, in the business jargon means volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. But let us try to change the term VUCA to value, unique, co-creation, and action. Let's do it all together for India to be at the forefront of mobility globally. 
this is the dawn of a new era indian ink needs to look for opportunities in every crisis needs to design a new future paving the way towards atmanirbhar bharat connecting communicating and collaborating is the way forward for the industry so friends let us hear from mr pradeep david on collaborative robots in the electronic industry but before i call mr pradeep david let us run the first poll question friends can we have the first poll please so friends the first poll uh, here are you using robots or cobots in your applications on shop floor or in designing products and the options available here are yes i'm planning to use it i don't have it but i'm planning to use it in the next 12 months the third option is i'm not clear on the benefits of robots or cobots and the fourth option no there is no plan to use robots or cobots so we'll give a few seconds for our audience so gonna work can we close the poll please so friends if we look at the results of these uh, it's a close call between yes and no so 35% are already using the robots and cobots in fact it's encouraging that 15% are planning to use robots or cobots in the next 12 months 10% are not clear on benefits of robots which i'm sure after the presentation today from mr Pr pradeep david this number would decrease substantially and 40% are not yet using but maybe in the future they could be looking at this opportunity friends i would like to briefly introduce mr pradeep david mr pradeep david has 30 years of experience having worked in us singapore and india he is qualified expert in robotics and industrial automation with masters in robotics from clemson university and mba from market university in us pradeep is general manager south asia for universal robots pleasure to have you with us uh, today pradeep and i'm sure our viewers are excited to hear from you and see also your interesting and insightful presentation on boosting electronic manufacturing and research development with robots the floor is now uh, yours pradeep thank you um thank you so much uh, mr nath thank you vdma for this uh, opportunity to uh, to talk about cobots to everyone and the audience uh, for joining us and special thanks to mr manohar and uh, also um mr dhananjay naidu who's going to support me a little bit on on this presentation so i've just uh, gone ahead and shared my screen let me just confirm that you can see the screen Uh, Manohar, can you just confirm? Yeah, it's visible, uh, Pradeep. You could go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so we'll get started right away. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is collaborative robots. And um, I think you all see on the camera behind me, you see a little robotic arm that's moving around, doing something. And uh, yeah, so since it's the COVID era, I think uh, it's appropriate to talk about what a collaborative robot can help you do in uh, the covid era all right so the top left video actually shows a little arm with a disinfectant gun and it's going and spraying uh, you know places that may have been con contaminated uh, the top right shows where a collaborative robot takes a uv wand and sanitizes with a uv wand uh, maybe an infected workstation or something like that uh, bottom left shows at the university of denmark where it's actually taking swabs you know at the back of your throat it's got a touch sensor and finally at the bottom right in spain it's a car factory which actually uses a cobot for something different uh, but it's actually in this video it's actually making uh, respirators so i guess the concept here being a collaborative robot is pretty friendly you can use it for different applications and you can see the respirators made here and uh, everybody's applauding in the car factory so this is just a kind of a by the way to show how flexible these devices which we call collaborative robots okay so 
you can think of it as a human arm, right? Which is what we are showing in this picture. Um, you see a human being shaking hands with a collaborative robot because these things are not like a robot, uh, which are industrial and which you need to be scared of. It could hurt you. But these are things that can help you, number one, with social distancing. As you can see in the picture on the top left, uh, that's actually a picture of uh, Bajaj Auto. And uh, the collaborative robot is hanging up on the ceiling and uh, it gives automatic social distancing between two operators. Okay, Mr. Rahul Bajaj's vision was to have 50% women on the shop floor, so collaborative robots are actually helping him. It's doing more of the uh, hard work, if you would. Um, robots are known to work in the dull, dirty, dangerous uh, jobs. I add two more Ds to that, which is difficult and where distancing is required. So five Ds of manufacturing, you know, jobs that are dull, difficult, dangerous, difficult and where distancing is required. So here's an example of uh, uh, at the bottom left, you can see this is at uh, a L'Oreal factory in Chakan uh, Pune, where operators are actually dismantling a robot and taking it to a different location. So you can't imagine this with a robot that I can actually use it in different machines, even in the same shift, whereas a collaborative robot you can. Okay, so if a machine number 12 operator shows in sick, you can dismantle a cobot from here, four screws, and take it to the other location, plug it into standard single phase power, and it's off and running. Okay. Uh, bottom right, we talk about democratized automation. So one of the concepts here is, it's not only the large companies that can afford cobots. Okay, we try and show that SMEs, you know, people like this lady out here, I can guarantee you she's not a robot trained program or anything like that. She's just an operator. And we have put a teach pendant in her hand and she is now programming uh, a cobot. Yes, certainly she was scared in the beginning, but we told her, do you use WhatsApp on your cell phone? And sure enough, she does. And uh, then we said, no problem. We can teach you how to use this, uh, uh, program this cobot. Okay. And the final and most important concept is the concept of partial automation. Okay, so cobots, particularly in this day and age, when nobody has cash flows uh, that's going to support massive projects and you know multi-year um, uh, uh, project cycles and etc., partial automation allows you to start small. Okay, so if I have let's say 30 lakhs, I can put a cobot in and have a human work with the cobot safely, and bring automation in, rather than wait for let's say three crore budget to be approved for the entire automation that I need. Okay, so when another 30 lakhs opens up, I can put another cobot in. So since it's safe to operate alongside a human being, the concept of human robot collaboration is imperative, is, is very key, or what we call partial automation, okay? So all these things make the, your ROI or payback period extremely compelling, wherein you can pay back for the collaborative robot very quickly, allows you to follow the norms that the government is enforcing on us, like social distancing, and redeploy it like a tool, okay, instead of just having it fixed at one location. So one more slide here, just to talk a little bit about, uh, it's one of the disruptive technologies of tomorrow. So for Frost and Sullivan has uh, identified the 50 disruptive technologies of uh, the next decade, and collaborative robots happens to be one of them. You won't see just robots here. Robots are, you know, 60 year old technology, but collaborative robots along with 5G, along with blockchain, along with AI is the next generation of technology. Okay, so when you make a decision to put cobots in your plant, you're actually future proofing your factory. Mr. Nath has already covered this. He talked about the 41% increase in robot sales in the electronics industry. This is massive. So the electronics industry, more than the automotive industry, is seeing the benefits of cobots. Uh, and uh, let's see, what we are here to discover in the next uh, 50 minutes or so is how that is. You know? So from an electronics perspective, we are using cobots in final assembly. So what you're seeing there in the left, and I'll show this video later on, it's assembling something like your Alexa or this device that you talk to, smart speakers, right?
quality control. Okay, so this is another big uh, area where cobots are used in quality control. Refurbishment, okay, refurbishment of electronic parts. And this you see that actually two grippers are mounted at the end of arm or end of arm tooling, the two of them. So this is very common wherein you can actually uh, load a machine with one gripper, rotate it, and then unload the machine to the other gripper. Okay, so, so that's typically a refurbishing and finally packaging. So in electronics, you know, the small circuit boards, you've got to package millions of them sometimes. And we'll show you examples of how cobots are used for these applications in the electronic space. Okay. Uh, just a little bit about some of our customers, uh, you know, Bosch, LG, Scott Fetzer. These are kind of in the electronics segment, but we're all over the globe. We're also talking to the uh, research community. So uh, a lot of R&D facilities around India and around the world are using cobots because it's really a really a very powerful tool and uh, innovation centers are finding it very useful to deploy in their next generation manufacturing. So here's a quick example of how in an innovation center they are using collaborative robots. So in the Jesus Robotics Lab, we try to innovate technologies uh, which are primarily research driven uh, to develop uh, new age robotic solutions for uh, I'll turn off the volume there, but uh, hopefully you saw that in TCS, this is uh, being used to display to their customers uh, what their next generation industry 4.0 uh, concepts are like. You know, So this is a very common thing with uh, customers like TCS. Here's a German company in India, Mercedes-Benz. By the way, we had signed an NDA with them, and I normally would not have been able to show you this. But the CEO, Mr. Ex-CEO now, Mr. Dieter Jetske, when he was here in uh, Bangalore, he went back and he posted this on his LinkedIn page. So now I can post it because it's right in the public domain. And here's all the engineers in Bangalore. You can see in the Bomasandra plant, they, uh, the R&D people are sitting back there. And on the right-hand side, you see him with four of our cobots. Okay? In the R&D lab, what they do is they simulate different Mercedes Benz, you know, C, S class, or C class, or B class, hatchback. And these guys in Bangalore write the software to do the automatic self-parking. So the robots, the cobots in this case, are actually holding the mirrors in the location where the car would have, the mirrors would have been, right? And including the bumpers, et cetera. So instead of you damaging a car, when you're fine tuning your automatic parking software, you do it on a jig like this. When the software is all proven, you send it to the Benz uh, factory in Germany and they load it there. So there was recently this video on YouTube where this Mr. Arvind Parthasharthi with the same thing, uh, he talks about how millennials and Gen Zs are attracted to these kind of technologies and uh, how they are using it in Mercedes Benz very, very effectively. So just a couple of slides to show the research and development community, you know, whether you're talking to Indian Institute of Science here in Bangalore or the IITs or Manipal Institute of Technology or VIT, Vellore, all these guys have cobots because it's safe for the students, number one. Number two, of computing and um, some of you may have seen this. This is an ongoing campaign by Nokia and uh, it's called uh, Speeding India Ahead and I, it's very interesting to to this about a 30 minute presentation. If you get a chance, please go see it on Republic uh, uh, TV. And it says more than 1 billion of foreign by Nokia Chennai plant. And guess what? In India, but over 50% are exported globally and the kind of foreign exchange they're generating. And the products they are using are front and center, a collaborative robot. In fact, the guy who used for cutting edge technologies uh, and, and companies that you can see right here in India. Service provider for okay. development. What I'll do now is I'll request Mr. Manohar just to play one video of the server so that it's not choppy and that's on Melex. So I'll be quiet for a minute while this video plays. In 
Your car contains a lot of electronics. It is quite possible that some of these components were manufactured by Kobots and Siegendorf. Melix is the largest service provider for electronics development and manufacturing in Austria. We are the market leader in products such as control units for intelligent all-wheel drives. Besides original equipment manufacturers, Melix customers are mainly automotive suppliers, with Melix being their single source provider of the entire value chain, from development, validation, industrialization, production and logistics. Melix offers zero defect quality and 100% delivery reliability at competitive prices. This can be guaranteed only by automating as cost efficiently as possible. That's why we use a cobot from Universal Robots here for packaging small electronic components. Cobots are cost efficient, they are easy to use and we can realize projects directly with our own engineers. In addition, we relieve our employees of monotonous tasks. The UR5 handles packaging tasks. Our primary goal here was to meet the cycle time. The target is to pack each PCB module in three to four seconds. With support from the Fraunhofer Institute, we were able to realize this project successfully. The Cobot is equipped with a gripper specifically developed for this application. After depanelization, the employee places the PCBs in the robot's working area. The robot then scans the PCBs, picks them with a the flow gripper and places them in a tray. Once the tray is fully loaded, the robot grabs it with the vacuum gripper and places it in a box. As soon as a box is fully loaded, the robot closes it and makes it ready for delivery. We were able to transfer the monotonous packaging work from the employee to the UR. This enables us to use our employees in more profitable ways elsewhere. The bottom line is a 25% increase in productivity in this manufacturing cell. The cobot moves slower in the areas it shares with humans. We also cushion the gripper tips so the employee can work absolutely safely next to the robot. To me this project proves that it is possible to realize really short cycle times and high volumes with collaborative applications. The project was very successful. The system runs reliably in production and we were able to achieve a clear competitive advantage. We package 2 million products per year more cost efficiently than before. Due to the success of this first implementation, we will use Cobots again for our next automation projects. After being packaged by the UR Cobots, the circuit boards find their way into cars all over the world. Yes, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Manohar. And, uh, I will share my screen again in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen. So what exactly is the difference between a robot, which is you see on the left-hand side, and a cobot? So I think uh, just by looking at the picture, since the picture speaks a thousand words, you notice that there's a big fence around the industrial robot because they are unsafe. They're known to kill people sometimes. Uh, but the cobot is put on casters and I can move it around almost uh, friendly like, uh, you know, and I can move it from location to location. So it's small and flexible. Also notice on the left, uh, the uh, caging is one, but it's pretty heavy, right? You typically need a fork truck, you need three phase power to set up high deployment costs. You need a trained person to set that up. But on the right hand side, it's actually something that the, the operator can be trained how to use. Okay. So I've actually put a few things out here in the next, uh, okay, let's move on. Yeah, so essentially the end of arm tooling and you know all these extra costs come in, in terms of um, a, a industrial robot, okay? So which you don't see up front, but these are costs that are gonna hit you when you put in a complete project. Whereas in a collaborative robot, you typically have the end of arm uh, tooling, you teach, the, teach it how, how to do its job, uh, and sometimes you can even just hand guide the robot and it's done. Okay, so, uh, so the cost is extremely low when you look at the installed cost of the product. Okay. So uh, one more video, and this time again, I'll request Mr. Manor to share the uh, Wistron video. And 
once again, I'm sorry I'm not sharing this because uh, just to, to give you a richer experience, uh, it's running right off the server and a little bit more uh, better experience for you.伟创之通专注于信息及通讯产品之设计代工领域，是全球信息专业ODM领导厂商之一。伟创的全球设计、生产和服务网络团队，以增长至六万人以上。公司总部设于台湾，其制造中心研发中心、客服中心、遍布
that's uh, bring us also uh, easy integration because we don't need so much protection around the machines. Uh, this is also a good return of invest because we can achieve about two years of return of invest with those equipment. And I see the major saving uh, in the integration because the integration of those robots is much easier than the other one. We do not need so much sensors around the equipment and this is really making the machines uh, efficient and cheap. We could as well, with the uh, use of collaborative robots, reduce the change over time. And previously, we had about 40 minutes. With collaborative robots, we can do it in 20 minutes. Last year, I was offered the opportunity to lead the introduction of a collaborative robots project here. I accepted the challenge, even though I did not have any experience in robotics. With the help of the distributor and some training, within a few weeks I was able to understand the basics of the robot and start programming for the end solution of the application. We were fortunate enough to already have the robot before needing it in production, so we were able to conduct tests in a room with a controlled situation and calculate cycle times and movements, thereby making advances before the ultimate launch. For this solution, we decided to change the traditional line follower concept and we wanted the robot to be the central part so that if at any time we needed to modify the line or carry out any type of modification, we would not depend on third parties. This solution is based on two UR10s, one for handling the product and the other for handling components. The main benefits we have gained by using collaborative robots on this line are one, since all programming is within the robot, there is no programming logic outside. What's more, all the electronics, robot controllers, and PLCs are integrated into the central control box, and Profinet is used to communicate with all stations. This means that any modification can be performed by us as the programming of the robot, which is the central part, is done in-house. The second benefit is changing the operator's role on this type of line, as they do not perform tasks without added value, such as moving a part from one station to the next, as this is done by the robot. This way is also much more economical than the traditional system of transporting products from one machine to the next. What's more, the operator can now access the line at any time and stop the robot. So far, this is the safety concept that we have implemented. This line is already in production and we have started another project based on the same solution, but this time with three UR10 robots. Our main challenge in our company is uh, productivity. We are very much challenged in automotive with productivity. For me, the collaborative robots is really a key solution for that. It will really help us to, uh, to continue to grow. So, I guess, uh, that was, uh, thank you, Mr. Manor, for that. I, I hopefully you got a good idea of how we are using um, cobots at uh, Continental in this case, right? There's another one which is creating uh, revolutions. Uh, in this uh, video, basically what we do is the assembly process of uh, the Alexa, you know? So uh, for interest of time, I'll actually skip over this, but you see these uh, devices are here. You see that the robot, it's a small UR3. We have different varieties of these, 3 kg, 5 kg, 10 kg, 16 kg payloads. And you see multiple tools. So sometimes it'll be doing the screwing application. Sometimes it'll be doing the glue dispensing application. Sometimes it'll be doing the nut running, you know, sometimes it'll, so uh, various jobs. You can see multiple tools uh, that the cobot goes, picks up which one it needs uh, as part of the assembly process, okay? So, Moving on, I'd just like to give a couple of testimonials, for example, in Dell, Chen uh, Chennai. This is uh, the plant manager of Dell talks about how he is doing packaging, you know, taking the Dell servers and uh, uh, basically 
the robot picks up the Dell server and holds it for the operator, and the operator puts the two end caps on it. End caps meaning the two styrofoam uh, uh, packaging, and then the robot then loads the entire thing into the box. So this is a great example of human robot collaboration, backbreaking work that the operator used to do. You know, and these servers are coming to three to four per minute are flowing through the line. So once again, the robot is doing the heavy lifting. The man is doing the delicate work, which is putting the styrofoam uh, end caps, and the robot then puts the entire thing into the box. And he talks about one million production cycle that they've done with the cobot in the last two to three years, and the reliability is one of the big positives, right? So we had a similar webinar like this where he was talking about this, and um, you know, uh, in this one he actually talks about social distancing. And I think what's what's even more important than social distancing, I think, was there are 10 Dell plants around the world and seeing how successful Chennai was in the deployment of cobots, the other 10 plants have actually put cobots now around the world. So it's great to see India taking the lead on that. So once again, there's a UR3, which is a 3 kg, there's a 5 kg payload, uh, 16 kg and a uh, 10 kgs. Uh, just the distance that it can reach, the working radius is slightly different, half a meter, uh, 850 mm, 900 mm, and 1.3 meters. Okay, and the IP rating, by the way, of all these is IP54. Okay. Uh, this gets into a little bit more detail on the product itself, but I think it may be premature to talk about it right now because this is just an introduction. Uh, we can talk about more details, and anybody have any questions, we can answer that for you. Okay. But I would like you to think of a cobot as nothing but a tool in your toolbox. Okay, So just like you see this lady in Volkswagen, Germany, she's handling the robot here to do spark plug replacement, or in this one to Trelleberg where they're using it to load and unload machines, or in BMW where they're using it to fix the door panel. It's just a tool. Okay, Think of a cobot not as something very um, uh, expensive or a robot kind of thing which needs a lot of expertise to set up, it is just a tool, similar to a tool that you have, like a drill or a wrench or a hammer. Okay. So with this, this is the main applications of cobots. Okay. And with this, I would request uh, Mr. Manohar to start the second poll question. Uh, once you see that these are where a cobot can be used in, you know, for pallet, uh, packaging, for lab analysis, machine tending, assembly jobs picking and placing, quality inspection, screw driving, injection molding, gluing and dispensing welding. Okay. So the poll is yeah. now open. The uh, the poll question is on. Uh, the poll question, uh, dear friends, states that what tasks or activities on your assembly line are currently being automated? Uh, the first option you have is screw driving, uh, PCB, second is PCB inspection, soldering, packaging. None, everything is manual. So let's give you uh, seconds for people to respond on this. So probably another 10 seconds and then we'll close the poll. Yeah. So I would share the results. So from the results, as you can see here, Everything is manual is a, is a good opportunity. I think Pradeep must be smiling now, seeing that there's a lot of opportunity for him now. And the second option, uh, second eyes is PCB inspection, and then comes soldering, and then comes packaging, and finally, screw driving. So I think Pradeep, there's a lot of opportunities for you now to go forward. Over to you. Thanks, Manohar. So let's see. On a showing screen. Okay, so uh, we'll move on to the next slide, and that is this is where I'd like to introduce my colleague, uh, Mr. Dhananjay Naidu, who is the managing partner of a company called Anode, who's got a lot of practical experience in India uh, in the electronic space. So over to you, Dhananjay. Yeah, thank you for a kind introduction, Pradeep. Hello, everybody. Wow, what a session we're having. Solving problems through engineering, my favorite subject, too. First, I would like to thank uh, VDMA India and uh, UR India for giving us this opportunity to present ourselves here. 
Before we get into what we are and what we do, I would like to start with a small story. Uh, we found an operator in an SMT line making an average 24 trips, transporting material from one end of the line to another. In the process, he traveled a total of 1,000 meters, carried a cumulative weight of 720 kilos, and took 36 minutes of his eight-hour shift doing so. Imagine if he's doing this every single day. Today, with our help, with our automation, he just pushes a button and the job gets done. This is what we do. We love automation. But does it have a business impact? This is a slide, this snapshot, which is taken out from McKinsey, which tells there is an opportunity for us to build a business on automation. The predictable physical activities, which has been found out, has a 60 percentage automation capabilities, right? That said, in India, probably we have much more capability than the 60%. Next slide, please. What we build, we build automated guided vehicles, basically for material handling and automation. We build turnkey robotic solutions with UR being a partner. And basically we look at applications where we need a human dexterity coming into picture. And we also make special purpose machines specifically designed and built for your special applications within your factory floor. And we also have certain machines which are we call as mainstream machines. They still are SPMs, but can also be industry level solutions. Next slide, please. Why anode? Our approach is always value first, right? Uh, if you look at, you know, Stephen Covey uh, put it in his right word saying, start with the end in the mind. So as a business partner, we expect or we have our prospects and our customers to have the value proposition of any certain project to be put in first for discussion, right? The profits and the price comes later. As long as the value proposition is not understood, there's no point of discussing anything further because at the end of the day, we both are losing our valuable time. So that's our approach from the company. We always put value first in any projects which come to us. And of course, we're also a make in India company. We are an MSME company based in India, Bangalore. And we prefer to do a lot of in-house designing and development to promote make in India. And we also have a strong presence. We have 10 years plus in automation. And we have a very good uh, Fortune 500 customer base. And we also have a partner network across Pan India to support our customers. And we also are uh, industry focused. We focus on the electronic manufacturing and assembly. We don't do much on the other side. So that's where our strengths are. And we also have the highest cobalt installation base in electronic manufacturing in India, in India specifically to say. Next slide, please. What is our expertise? We are done projects with the UR in the pick and place application, the quality inspection, like in the poll we saw that a lot of people are interested in uh, PCB is, uh, assembly inspection. So that's what we've done. Screw driving, of course, R&D applications. A couple of our installations are at uh, a customer in a, a big R&D lab doing some reliability, test, reliability testers of their products using the UR robot. You can imagine the reliability of the robot trying to do reliability of their own product using the robot. Lab analysis, the other one. And the final is the assembly. Next slide, please. It's a case story we've uh, kind of we like to talk about is uh, the challenge. A customer gave us a challenge. He had 48 resonators to be assembled and screwed onto a product. This was a very high fatigue activity by, done by the operator. It was a monotonous job of uh, nature of work. And it had a cycle time about 12 minutes to basically assemble one unit. What they asked us to do is to reduce the manpower and probably improve the productivity in doing so. What did we do? We designed and developed an in-house magnetic adapter fixed onto the UR robot. Combining two different applications, we were able to provide one single solution. Basically, assembly and screwing put together on a single robot. What did, what did we get? What's the result of this innovation? We improved the cycle time to basically nine minutes per unit. And we basically improved the productivity by 25%. And we also helped the customer allocate his manpower into more value-add activity rather than doing this dull and uh, repetitive job. Next slide, please. 
Now, we as I said, as an engineering company, we love to innovate. So what we've done in the recent innovation is that we have uh, basically integrated the, the UR robot on an AGV. So basically, if you look at most of the applications, you see a robot, you know, grouted onto a particular platform. Now we basically unlock this. And this is only possible with a cobot because of the power consumption, the capability of having the weight, and also the uh, dexterity of the robot. That's the main advantage of having UR on an AGV. By this, what happens is you can have multiple uh, operations or machines can be tend with a single robot. That's the total advantage of collaborative robots. This is impossible to do with any industrial robot available in the market. Next slide, please. Yeah, once again, thank you all. You think automation, you please think anode. Thank you very much for opportunity. Thank you very much, Pradeep. Uh, th thank you, Dhananjay. That was very, very interesting. I'm sure there'll be questions for you uh, at the end. So um, now, what are the, some of the major factors that are beneficial to you in using cobots? Number one, we talked about moving it around, right? Notice this thing is on casters. There's a cobot, just like Dhananjay mentioned on an AGV. This is not an automatic guided vehicle. It's a manual push cart. But the point is I'm moving the cobot from one machine to another, okay? I put a locating pin and it's off and running. Okay, so lightweight, easy to be moved, flexible deployment for agile manufacturing, redeployable. So proving the ROI becomes very compelling because if you, you don't know what problem you're gonna have one week from now. If you can move the cobot as a helping arm to that particular location, um, that has saved immense amount of downtime for you in your factory. Okay? So small, lightweight and flexible deployment is number one feature. Number two feature in electronics particularly, is easy to deploy, program, and use. Okay, so uh, while we don't have time to show you how to program, uh, we have shown that MSME employees, you know, with no programming background, just basic 10 standard education, let's say, you know, we teach them. In this case, it's actually loading and unloading. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe it's a 3D printers or something like that, right? Again, it's put on a mobile device like this, and he's programming it to, uh, to uh, uh, maybe it's a PCB that's being uh, tested, you know, so inserting. And uh, TCP and socket communications, Ethernet, IP, I think one of the one of the videos you heard that, Profinet, all these things come standard with the cobot. It's a complete industry 4.0 device. So it doesn't matter what your network is, you know, TCP, IP, Ethernet sockets, uh, Modbus, Profinet, uh, we can communicate to it. Okay. The third big functionality of this in the electronic space it has a very mature ecosystem for peripherals. What does that mean? You know, a robot by itself doesn't do very much. It's the intelligence that you attach to the end of it, right? So you need to have very sophisticated tools called end effectors, right? Software, application. Sometimes I need to put a camera in there for inspection. Sometimes I need to put a force talk sensor. If I'm trying to, let's say, align the pins of uh, a, a PCB and make sure that without bending the pins, I can insert it, right? So I need a very, very delicate force stock sensor. So these are the accessories that I need at the end of the cobot, right? We call it our UR Plus platform because we don't do all these things. We have a bunch of uh, partners, 200 partners around the globe that have developed 2D cameras, 3D cameras, two jaw grippers, three jaw grippers, grippers that do measurement while I remove it from the CNC machine. So after machining it, I actually do the gauging while removing it and then make a pass fail decision while I'm picking up the part, okay? Or four stock sensors like this, et cetera. Like that, there are about 200 different vendors on our UR Plus platform. What does it mean to you? It means that I don't need to interface all these things with the cobot. I bring them, plug them together. The software of this particular device shows up on the teach pendant of the robot, okay? So that's the beauty of the integration of these 200 odd devices. Uh, that you can get. So it's like you can call an app store for robots, you know, that we have created called the UR Plus platform. And the fourth, uh, very important, it's collaborative and safe. You see the human being is right next to the cobot, setting it up, no caging, you know, unlike an uh, industrial robot that you see in the bottom right. This is very uh, easy to deploy. If it accidentally hits the operator, it just stops, and then you hit the, uh, the start restart button and it starts from that location again, okay? 
So uh, what is the standards that it supports for this particular safety? It's called the ISO TS15066. It's a technical specification that the ISO, uh, which allows you to walk inside this cage, right? In a collaborative, non-collaborative mode, there's something called speed and distance monitoring, wherein when a person moves in, I can even have the cobots uh, slow down in speed. But more than all that, I can have the human being inside working hand in hand with the cobot. Okay, so collaborative robot supports all these four forms of um, safety for an operator. So here are some of the typical examples that we come across in the electronic space. I'll go through these fast. Material removal, right? So here's an example of, um, you can see there's a polishing application. Okay, so um, instead of the human being doing the buffing by hand, right? So I'm doing a buffing application because I've got a force stock sensor at the end and a human is working side by side. So to load and unload, in this case, there are speakers, both speakers and a kind of speakers. And she is now touching up something manually for final inspection. Whereas the robot does the hard job of coat after coat uh, of uh, 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 lacquer uh, and uh, polishing, okay? Here's an example of material removal, deburring application. So you put a deburring gun on sand there and it can actually do the uh, small burr removal, et cetera, right? Done for server cases and those kind of things. The rough edges can be smoothened out. Assembly applications. Here's an example of, this is actually from China. You can see that this is a, a computer that's being assembled. And uh, here it's actually taking the motherboard from somewhere, from an assembly line. And the entire motherboard is now is inserted into the uh, chassis. And after that, the uh, hard drive is picked up and also assembled, right? So here's a typical example of assembly in the electronic space where a collaborative robot can be. It's also some barcode is being checked. So the right uh, hard drive is being inserted, et cetera. We also do things like USB insertion removal for testing, you know, repeated USB insertion removal, et cetera. Fitbit testing. Here's another assembly inserting application. It's actually taking the wires and inserting it into uh, the connector, okay? So a little bit more intricate job here, but you can program the cobot to do this, okay? Moving on, we have screw driving. This is probably the most popular application now uh, in the electronic space. This is in Indonesia and in a Philips plant. You can see they've mounted two uh, uh, nut runners there. And it's doing the screw driving application of the printed circuit boards. One is picking up the screw, one is doing the screw driving. Okay. So screw driving is a very, very uh, labor intensive job. Very little value added to that. Today it can be automated almost entirely with cobots. Uh, this is not just an electronic space. We're seeing a lot of this being used in automotive also for things like headlight assembly, those kind of things. Then we have welding and soldering applications. So here's a typical example of soldering. Uh, notice that how elegantly the cobot can be mounted upside down because it's so lightweight. I can, very simple structure, aluminum structure, I can mount it up upside down. I can mount it on the machine. I can mount it on a pedestal, et cetera. So in this case, it's doing some kind of a inductive heat soldering with specialized tools, right? And it can do tool changing so that I can do soldering and nut running with the same cobot, you know? This is being done at uh, places like Mahindra. Okay. Moving on, we see some more soldering examples here in the PCB space. You can see some typical soldering application happening there using a cobot. Okay. In the interest of time, I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, material handling. So we've already seen packaging, so I won't bore you with this, but you notice here's some kind of an oven. There's a cobot on the left-hand side, it's loading parts in. There's a cobot on the right-hand side as the part comes through the oven, it's picking up the part, right? So standard picking and placing, material handling, you can call it. Yeah, very typical application of cobots. And finally, we have packaging. So this is probably very, very common in the electronic space. In this case, notice it's taking these electronic uh, circuit boards or whatever they've manufactured and putting it into boxes. Very similar to what you saw with Melex, right? So big, uh, there's a camera mounted here, so it's looking at the location and putting it the right way. All those things are happening uh, along with the automatic uh, case filling. 
Okay. And finally, machine tending. So I think a lot of you mentioned you were interested in testing. So our parent company of Universal Robots is called Teradyne, and Teradyne is into test equipment. So Teradyne uses a lot of our own cobots that uh, we take to do applications like this. Notice there's multiple machines around. The circuit boards are loaded and unloaded. And after the inspection, it is either in the reject bin or in the shipment bin, you know, after the final inspection. So you can see multiple uh, machines can be serviced depending on the cycle time that you have and the tag time you're looking for. And here's an example of uh, oh, cell phone testing. So here, um, again, in, uh, this is in some kind of a show where cell phones are being used, uh, are being tested, various aspects of the cell phone, sometimes drop testing, sometimes, yeah, so you can see the cell phone is there and it's going into, a, basically it's just loading it into a machine. Okay. Very common application, again, in the electronic space. Many cameras all working together to make this application easy and successful. Huge savings in uh, personnel, in time, in value addition, in quality, in productivity. Okay. And finally, machine tending again, a, a test machine. I think this is a repeat kind of thing. I already showed you loading and unloading a test machine, slightly different take on it. Here the parts are randomly uh, placed and notice the completely automated loading it into a testing machine. Notice the parts in the tray are randomly there. So the camera is now taking a photograph. Now it sees which way the part is. Okay, it takes a snapshot of that. Once it, it gets a snapshot of all the parts, the camera, it now configures the robot to notice there's an empty bin also, so it won't go there. And now it's picking out the parts from the uh, testing machine. It's already done the testing, placing it in some output bin, etc. And finally, dispensing. So there's another very common application where you're actually dispensing uh, various uh, fluids. You know, in this case, uh, it could be a sealant, it could be a various dispensing type applications, soldering. Okay. All right. And finally, a uh, couple of slides to show you that it's being used all over India. You can see any of these videos. On YouTube, just type in Universal Robots Bajaj or Universal Robots Carl Zeiss. You will see these videos on YouTube. You will also see many SMEs. So if you're an SME watching this and saying, thinking that robots are not for me, uh, you can take a look from all the kind of uh, small, this is a, just a paint shop in Gurgaon. You know? He has guys who do painting. He found that putting a robot like this, which the painter himself trained the cobot how to do the painting, his quality went up so through the roof, he didn't have any rejects. He had to do eight coats of paint and the operators after six or seven hours of working, they were doing eight or 10 coats or six coats, they were getting rejected because when you do the laser etching, the quality is not good, right? So by putting a cobot, if you ask it to do eight coats, it'll do exactly eight coats, okay? So if this is of interest to you, we have something called an academy, you can go online to our Universal Robots website. There's something called the Universal Robots Academy. Uh, there's about, about nine different modules. You can learn about this. Uh, if it's uh, more interesting, come and talk to us. We can do a little more in-depth class. Uh, there's, there's simulation software for those of you who are a little more advanced and you know Python programming. It's available for free on our website. You can get the simulation. So you may not have a robot, but I can write the entire code for it, test it out uh, on a simulation uh, package, okay? learn about it in the academy etc nine benchmark and electronics headquartered in the US. finally i this is the last video i wanted to show you what our neighbors are doing this is, happens to be in thailand right so how they are using ur10s in the electronic space very effectively notice a bunch of them with the social distancing and they are one of our competitors if you look at it you know thailand uh, uh, vietnam are all competing for the same space you know the electronic space so it's very important that we jump on this technology because a lot of our neighbors are using this quite effectively and uh, and gaining a lot of orders because of this kind of automation okay so with that i will turn it over for the final uh, poll question to mr rajesh nath and request him to con conduct the final poll and then the q a session
Right. Thank you. Thank you, Pradeep. Thank you for the very interesting presentation and showing the various application of Kobo's. Uh, I think it was really very impressive, the wide range of application and the flexibility of the Kobo's, what you have shown in the presentation. So I sure. think thank you for these detailed presentation, uh, Pradeep. Thank and you. Thank you. Quickly run up a poll question. Yes, thank you, Pradeep. Uh, Manor, can we have the poll, please? Um, I think this was already okay. Yeah, this, uh, this is the question. Right, right. Uh, what applications, activities of your assembly lines are you looking to automate with cobalt? Screw, screw driving, PCB inspection, soldering, packaging, others. So, friends, you saw in the presentation from uh, Pradeep the various applications. Uh, of Kobots, and here you have also the option to say which application actually you are you want the Kobots to undertake for you. So we'll just give it a few seconds for the audience to respond. Okay, we can close the poll now. So friends, as per the response from the audience, the most uh, favorable application they are looking at is soldering, and then followed by others, and the other important is packaging, and PCB inspection and screw driving. I think uh, these have more or less the uh, similar weightage. So thank you, thank you audience for uh, giving us your feedback. Now we'll take uh, the questions, Pradeep. Um, so, uh, Pradeep, the first question is, is it possible to teach cobots with hand movements? Uh, Pradeep, you are muted. I think if you can just unmute yourself. Yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Yes. Uh, so I repeat that. I am very sorry about that. Uh, the there are many ways to uh, program the robot. So yes, handheld handheld teaching is one way. I gave an example of uh, the painter, right? We actually had the painter who's got full skills of painting, hold the end of the robot and actually show how to paint, right? And the robot learns it. By the way, we've done it with a celebrity chef in uh, uh, London. Uh, I forgot okay. the guy's name. Uh, oh, anyway. But anyway, he's a celebrity chef. We gave him haptic gloves. And uh, when he was making a meal, the cobot was able to learn from the haptic gloves and was able to replicate the meal. So yes, we can teach a robot by showing it. Uh, the other way you can program the robot is with the teach pendant. So if you're a little bit more robot savvy, I can make it go up, down, left, right, you know, theta one, theta two, et cetera, with the teach pendant. And if I'm even more savvy, like in, uh, you know, we have like the IIT guys, they throw away the teach pendant and they do everything in Python and higher level programming, right? So depending on what you're trying to do, there's different levels of programming uh, that you can do to uh, program a cobot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another very interesting question, Pradeep, is how well can cobots handle high volume production processes? And I'll also read the second part of the question. Uh, does the size, size of the part play a major role in operational efficiency of the cobots? I think a very interesting question, Pradeep. Great, great. So for this, I will request Dhananjay uh, to, to uh, turn on your uh, your camera also, please. He's, uh, Dhananjay, you're there? Yeah, good. So yeah, so yeah I'll, uh, I'll let Dhananjay answer because he has a lot of ex expertise on high, um, high speed uh, production. But from terms of the weight that he, you mentioned, yes, um, when we talk, let's say a five kg robot, right? Um, the maximum weight that you can have at the end, that's the tooling as well as the part that you're holding has to be within five kg, right? So let's say I have multiple tools. I've got a soldering gun and I've got a, <coughs> uh, excuse me, a, a drill and I've got something else, right? A, a part. Then all the weight of that combined should be five kg, right? So Dhananjay, can you give a little idea of the, uh, uh, I think he was asking about the volumes that we can handle, volume, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. For high, Production 
can also the cobot be utilized then and there yeah yeah it's it's actually a very good question in fact, in, in fact you know uh see the cobots are basically designed for functioning in a very safe environment in a collaborative environment right so to you know uh, be within the safety limits okay we have to be running at a certain speed right that said we can always enhance the capacity of the robot so what we call is we call it in the industry as gang picking right for example if you have to have a couple of parts or co-parts to be placed we can design an end effector tool in such a way that you know we can have multiple parts picked at the same time so this basically enhances the productivity of the collaborative robots okay. to answer that and uh, to that said about the weight of the component right i mean compared to the industrial robots right collaborative robots we are looking at what about 75 grams 100 grams probably that's probably i think would be a, a cell phone weight we don't need expect have a 75 kilo you know industrial robot trying to do taking a 75 grams component right we can't get head around it right so a uh, cobot which is pretty much small right and lightweight we can probably have these cobots doing the job you know because being in industry very long time we wanted to do with the collaborative robots that's what i would say right um, in fact a few questions are now really pouring in pradeep uh, yes the next question is do you have smaller payload than three kgs uh no at this moment no three kgs is the smallest payload at this time yes Right. Then there's another very interesting question is, uh, is it possible to put our own software for the Cobot programming? So yes, answer is yes. That's a very good question. So whoever asked that is probably a little high level programmer. Uh, so like the right. example I gave you, um, uh, IIT, right? So they were called for the Amazon pick challenge. Amazon pick challenge, they give you a bin with all kinds of parts, you know, Hershey's Kisses, this, that and you have no idea what orientation there is. So you need a very smart AI uh, camera which can identify where what the part is and without breaking the other parts, take a um, uh, end effector to pick it up. Now they did that in ROS programming, right? So they did completely their own programs, uh, nothing to do with our teach pendant and through low level commands, access the robotic arm, individual motors to do this and do that. So answer is yes, you can do that. It needs a little higher programming level of skill than I kind of explained where anybody can do it. This requires a lot of skill, but it can be done. Right, right. And uh, I think uh, you had, uh, there is a question that, like screwdriving, can cobots be used for riveting also? Uh, riveting applications, um, Dhananjay, have you seen any riveting applications? I may not have seen any video on that. I think you're muted there, Dhananjay. I got it, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Yes, yeah, so we haven't we haven't seen uh, come across riveting as such in the you know electronic manufacturing. Uh, okay. It's more about the box building where you know the PCBs get basically you know into the box and the box gets screwed onto it. Yeah, we're not seeing right. so far. What what was okay. the one that you were talking about? The resonators, 48 resonators. That that was what more an assembly application or what was that? It was an assembly plus screw driving. It's a screw driving oh. application. Screwdriving. Pick and screwdriving combined together. Okay. So the person who had the riveting question, if you can get back to us with details, we can have one of our technical experts uh, talk to you about that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, then is cobot can can it also be used in material testing applications? Yes. Is it so already lab, happening in India? Yes. Actually, lab testing. Uh, when you say material testing, I'm wondering what exactly is asking about. But lab testing is a very, very common application. So we have very large yeah. customers. I think you use their products on a daily basis. They use it for lab testing. It's used for cell phone testing, you know, uh, like the, teach, the, the touch screen, you know. Uh, material testing, I presume, is similar to lab testing, is what I consider lab testing. So what we've done at one of right. our customers tonight is uh, they're using our cobot to basically do, you know, reliability testing of, you know, zippers and you know, helmet, helmet uh, visors. So these kind of applications we've seen in the R&D labs where the cobots have been deployed. Right, right. Uh, Pradeep, there are two questions which I leave to your discretion if you want, would want to take it. Uh, one is, how are you superior than competition? And the second is, what is the price of the UR3 
uh, 3E COBOL. Sure. Would you like to take this up? Uh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, competition is there. I mean, uh, there is no field that uh, has, is without competition. We are, we are proud to be the, uh, the originators of this technology. So we've been in the business a little more than 10 years. Uh, we've got 46,000 robots, cobots deployed in the globe. Far more. I think we've got more than 50% of the market share. Uh, but having said that, yes, oh. there are about 40 to 50 different companies uh, that make cobots today. So uh, it's it's the fastest growing field in industrial automation. So you can expect many, many people to be there. Um, the second question was, uh, uh, what is the price of the URCE? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the the uh, the price range of our cobots are anywhere from about 16 lakhs. They start around. That's the UR3, not the 3E. By the way, the difference between the 3 and the 3E is uh, 10 years of technology, right? We started with the UR3, and the 3E is enhanced. And it's basically, uh, it's got a four stock sense, a little bit more. So it's a, it's a little higher price. Maybe uh, you put 20% more on that. But it starts at around about 16 uh, lakhs and goes up to around 22 lakhs. That's our typical price range in our robots. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, Pradeep, maybe the last question for today is, uh, you had mentioned that uh, Cobot is industry 4.0 ready. So communication with other machines or devices would not be an issue. Could you just uh, briefly elaborate on this, uh, Pradeep? Yeah. Sure, I'll give a little quick introduction and then I'll have Dhananjay also from his practical standpoint. But um, what happens with a Cobot is all the interfaces to the field it's basically got an arsenal of interfaces, right? You've got digital inputs, digital outputs, analog inputs, analog outputs, all built into the cobot, right? Uh, into the control box. Yeah. You've got all the communication channels, ethernet sockets. You've got TCP IP. Yeah. So let's say I have a, a Rockwell, a Allen Bradley network. I can just connect directly to it, right? I have Profinet. So if I have Siemens, I can just connect directly to it. A Modbus, you know? So let's say I want to add 64 more IO. I just put a Modbus cable and I can hook. So just about any form of communication. Uh, you know, that we have an, a video of our two cobots solving the Rubik's Cube. How do they do that? Well, they communicate with each other. How do they communicate with each other? I just put an ethernet cable between the two and they're talking, right? It's that simple. Because everything is built into the controllers, right? So to answer your question, I almost, I mean, I wouldn't go about to say we can do any communication. Talk to us. There's many, many ways we can communicate with the cobot and get it working for what you're trying to do. Dhananjay, uh, any sure. comments on that? Yes, Pradeep. I mean, uh, as rightly said, you know, uh, the communication it goes as well as you know, starting from a basic, you know, hardwiring the robot with the IOs and all the way to the high-level, you know, uh, integration with Modbus and Propinet. All the industrial level the communication protocols have been taken care of when the cobot is developed. So we have complete access to whichever way they want to communicate with their equipment. Yes, that's definitely a possibility, and we have done that in, in, in the past as well. Right. Uh, I'm tempted to take one more question, Pradeep, which I sure. think is very interesting also. Please. Uh, the electronic sector is highly sensitive about space utilization. Uh, so what they're saying is that they are looking at miniature Models of miniaturization is the mantra. Here, SCARA robots find preference. How would URs art articulated cobots cope up with this challenge? And any plans to come out with miniature cobots compacter than the UR3, especially for electronic yeah. manufacturing? I think this is a deep question from someone sure. who knows the industry very well. Yeah. No, that's a very it's a very good question. And you know, frankly. Uh, this forum is no way to uh, say that SCARA robots are no good. They're, they are definitely a very popular and a very effective method of uh, robotics. You know, SCARA, like if a two-axis robot or a three-axis or a very commonly four-axis robot does your job, uh, by all means, please use that. That is the, the right technology. Uh, what we're finding is uh, with a six-axis robot is, you know, it's like a human arm. And right. you need, very often, somebody will buy a four-axis robot and find, oh my God, I wish I had a little bit more control because I need to wriggle this thing, you know, like uh, a human being does. Uh, it's just not fitting. And you need that extra uh, level of control. So we are finding that six-axis robots give you the most dexterity, you know. Um, uh, will we actually come up with something like uh, a four-axis or something? I, I can't talk for our R&D people. 
uh, we, we are into the kind of six axis space, but certainly you're right. Um, SCADA robots definitely have their space in the electronics field. Yeah. Right. So I think, thank you very much, uh, Pradeep and Dhananja. You've taken all the questions very, and I think uh, very good replies to the questions. And uh, I'm very happy our audience also, I think uh, very relevant questions we got uh, from the audience. Yeah. So I would just like to conclude. Uh, uh, first of all, yes, I would like to thank Pradeep and Dhananja for the excellent presentation. Also, Pradeep, thanks to Universal thank Robots for partnering with the VDMA for this very thank interesting you. webinar. Uh, I would like to thank also all our participants. We had a large, good number of participants uh, participating from the electronics industry, electrical industry, partly also from the automotive industry. So it, uh, I would like to thank all our participants who spared the time to be with us today. And I would like to conclude with a quote from blogger turned New York Times best-selling author and speaker, Mandy Hale. She said, trust the weight, embrace uncertainty, enjoy the beauty of becoming, because when nothing is certain, anything is possible. <laughs> so thank you, friends. Uh, stay well, stay safe, stay optimistic, and thanks, Manohar, for also supporting this webinar so competently. All the best, uh, Pradeep Dhananjay. Thank you very much to all our audience. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot, uh, Nath Manohar. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dhananjay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.